Hello world, how y'all doing? It's your boy Boss Rider checking in again for Navigate Logistics. Welcome back to the channel. We took a few days off. Um, it's about 6.30 in the morning, still dark. I'm in Atlanta, about to make a delivery. Things been going smooth. Uh, give y'all an update on what's been going on. Uh, September 21st, we got all the maintenance stuff taken care of. And excuse me if if the truck is real loud, I'm doing a little park region right now. Uh, but we did a, we did a service on the truck, got the PM done, everything went smooth on that. Got an inspe annual inspection done, everything went smooth on that. Uh, we replaced the two front tires and we put a, we put the old ones on the on the tractor. I mean on the trailer. So we got all the maintenance go goals done for this month. I'm trying to keep an eye on this truck. Um, the second time I had to regen, and it's many days, so and, you know, I haven't had to do any type of regen it's like the first four months. So, but I've been pulling kind of heavy loads, so maybe that's what it is. Just keep an eye on it. Might have to get the DPF filter uh, clean. Um, anybody got some suggestions on? Waiting to do an update on part three on my series Carriers vs. Brokers. Uh, give y'all an update on what's going on with the, situ the last situation between me and the broker about the detention layover and the lumber fee. Um, it's, it's Thursday now and that, and that situation still ain't resolved, so I can't give an update. But look, be on the lookout for that video. I'm going to continue to do that series to try to inform these people I can and try to mend the relationships with the carriers and brokers out here, man, because when you're a spot, for, when you're a spot market carrier, you got to deal with them. And the relationship, I feel like, should be a lot better. Uh, but today's video, before I get started, can I please get that like? You can join the tribe and subscribe, and you can share if you really care. Today's video, I want to uh, continue on trying to give some tips and, um, just want to highlight some of the things I wish I knew before I started my trucking career. Um, for those who don't know, uh, I'm 42 years old. I'm over 20 years in the trucking industry. Um, I got experience in drive-in, flatbed, reefer, um, over the road, local. I work with big companies. I work with owner operators. And now I'm an independent contractor owner operator myself. Um, this would be mainly for people that just started out uh, trying to get their CDL, uh, new with their CDL, or have inspirations, and, um, or getting that CDL. Some things that I wish I knew before. Um, first and foremost, it's a low barrier of entry in this trucking industry. You can become an owner operator and be independent and um, working for yourself. Very, uh, I won't say easy, but it's a low barrier of entry, meaning that um, all you got to do is learn the business, get you a business license, find a way to finance your equipment, and uh, you, you you good to go. You know what I'm saying? It ain't no, you know, too much schooling you got to do as far, you know, other than, you know, getting your CDL and stuff like that. So, um, if, if you want to be independent and uh, run your own business, uh, trucking is, is a, a way you can do that. And uh, me starting out, I was young. I didn't know that. I was just trying to get, I was just trying to get, um. trying to get myself established, trying to get in some type of field where I can buy and make a good living. I didn't do, I didn't go the school route. Uh, I was kind of tired of school, uh, dealing with it in high school and stuff. So I just wanted to get my feet wet. I, I knew I was a hands-on type of person. Uh, and when I, when I stumbled upon a truck and I felt like, you know, that was my, that was the best day for me. I'm kind of a loner. 
I do I do good by myself. I don't get lonely and stuff like that. And uh, it, it felt it fit, you know, everything that I was about. So that's what I jumped into full throttle. I started, I studied, I went to uh, CD CDL school. I was CDT Roadmaster in Georgia. I think I did like two weeks of that. Uh, that'll be the first thing I wish I knew because I had good credit and uh, I let them put me on. I think I paid almost $10,000 for my CDL. I know that sounds crazy, but they were going based on your credit. And I was young and it was like a loan, personal loan that they signed me up for. And I didn't know until like after I got finished that some people was in there in the class for free. They were there through un unemployment and stuff like that. And I just didn't know, man. It was like, I don't know if they still doing that now, but it, they were like, if you had good credit, they would try to, you know, they would get like a small business loan and you would pretty much have to pay for it. What I ended up doing is I ended up filing bankruptcy back then, you know, so I didn't, I didn't pay for it. Once I got my, my foot in the door with trucking, I wrote off all my debt with bank, bankruptcy. But I wish I would have known. I would have found a cheaper route to get my CDL. I would have uh, not let them sign me up on that loan and everything. And, you know, because, you know, you don't have to pay that much to get a CDL. You actually can do it yourself. You can actually study yourself, take the permit. If you can find somebody that will let you do the, uh, the test in their truck, you can take the driver test in their truck. All that can be done for less than, you know, $500, I believe. So, that's the first thing I wish I knew. Um, uh, the second thing I wish I knew, let's see, is, um, and it's definitely a lifestyle. It's not just a job. You know, I knew I would be driving a lot. I didn't know the type of challenges and the things that it presented as far as you know trying to have a fair uh, uh, trying to have a family and raise children and stuff like that I learned as I went and I was young um, had a young family um, and I learned you know trial and error as I go you got to know that you're gonna have to make sacrifices your loved ones are gonna have to make sacrifices and there's going to be some challenging times. Uh, so that's another thing I wish I knew. Um, the third thing I wish I knew is. It's not a job that you, you're just going to get paid. Uh, somebody just going to hand you money. You're going to have to. Uh, trucking, you got to make the money. You know what I'm saying? You got to successfully deliver the product commodity on time you got to pick up and deliver on time you got to make that money. Um, you don't get a full check until you have a full week of work you know what i'm saying you got to deliver uh multiple loads a week to make a check you can make good money but you have to make that money it's not a job that you gotta just that's just gonna you know if you show up they're gonna pay you now, that ain't that ain't how it go you know what i'm saying uh, you got to use your skills every day you gotta be safe, and determined, motivated, plan out your day to build um, to build that check to um, receive that that income. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I didn't really have a problem with that because you know I'm a hands I'm a hands-on person, so you know I was picking the loads up and delivering them and uh, planning, you know, with no problem. Uh, I started out with. Like I already told y'all my age, but I started out with uh, no CB. I didn't have a cell phone. So it was just me in the truck and a map. You know what I'm saying? This is before GPS and all that stuff. You know, I, you know, in, in CDL school, they made sure we knew how to read a map and stuff like that. So that's what I was doing. And I would call on the pay phones, call the uh, shipper and the receiver and get instruction, I mean directions how to get to the facility and stuff like that. It was a lot of hands-on. It was a lot of, you know, um, looking in the, you know, looking in the yellow pages and stuff like that. Um, uh, we had a little, 
I started out with Snyder and we had a little Qualcomm, just a little small little computer and it would give you directions as best as it could and, and provide a phone number and you would always have to call it and get directions, you know, updated and stuff like that. But uh it's it's a it's a it's a lifestyle. You gotta make the money, you gotta drive, you gotta be able to drive six hundred miles a day. You gotta be able to drive eleven hours a day. You gotta be able to drive and plan. Uh, you're gonna be going through cities. Uh, if it's gonna be a rush hour, uh, are you capable of driving at nighttime? I started driving this this morning at like two thirty this morning uh, from Savannah. Got to got to Atlanta about six o'clock. Uh, I prefer driving at night because it's less traffic. To me, it's more safe. I've been doing that a lot lately. Sleeping during the day, just you know, let the truck burn. So, um, yeah, it's definitely a lifestyle. You got to make the money. Uh, it, you know, you can make good money. You can make over a hundred thousand dollars a year, but you got to drive. You got to be able to drive that eleven hours a day. You got to be able to pre-plan, pre-trip. Uh, you got to be able to think fast and uh, multitask. You know what I'm saying? Not only while you're driving. receivers and the shippers they might you know you might have to do multiple things at one time um, how to build a successful trucking career um, if you start off from scratch and you got no experience you get your CDL my opinion if I could do it all over again I started out right I started with a company a mega carrier I ain't gonna say I, I, already, I think I already said it but I started out with Snyder mega carrier um, it's good to start with those mega carriers because they have the insurance, they have the equipment, they have the support system to get you started out. If you need any uh, if you have any questions, they got the answers for you. Uh, if you make mistakes, they can cover up your mistakes. Uh, and all you need is one to two years of experience. That time goes by fast, especially when you drive trucks. So, uh, my opinion, to build a successful trucking career get that experience with a mega carrier or some type of small carrier uh you know that can that you can learn from uh that you can grow with um, and then once you get your experience if your main goal is to be independent and be an owner operator uh not everybody want to be an owner operator you know what i'm saying you know you got your pros and cons with that stuff uh, but if your goal is to be an owner operator, get your experience one two years under the mega carrier. If they have a lease purchase program, that's something I wish I would have did earlier. Uh, if they have a lease purchase program, go ahead and jump into that. What that does is now do your due diligence and research about the lease purchase program because some people. Uh, some companies don't have good ones. They'll just have you, you know, paying for a truck and you'll never be able to own it. But it's designed for you to be able to, while you're driving, pay on that truck. And within three, four, five years, you can pay that truck off and you'll own it. Uh, you make more money as the lease owner operator. And like I said, at the end of the contract, you should be able to walk away with that title. Get your experience first. Get into a lease purchase program. That'll probably be the easiest way for you to get um, on your own equipment. Uh, you'll probably have some backup as far as maintenance. Whoever you lease it from, you should be getting into a good truck where you can, you know, do a background check on the, on the equipment and stuff like that. You're just not buying it from a dealership. And, um, you know, I would do that. That's, in my opinion, that's the best way to build a trucking career. After that time, um, you have that bag of lease in the, the truck, and you're ready to get out on your own with your own equipment. You have that equipment. You know that equipment. Uh, you got your experience. It's easier for you to apply for your um, for your MC and DOT number, and the insurance won't be so high. When you're starting out, a lot of people just want to get some people just want to get their CDL to jump right into the being an owner operator. If you got the financial backing to do that, you know, more power to you. If you don't and you got to work for it, jumping in the truck trying to get your uh, own EMC, MC and DOT number, 
uh, you probably can attain it, but when it come to get your, uh, when it come to getting your insurance, that's gonna be the insurance could be uh, most likely higher than your than your truck loan. So uh, be wary of that. Insurance is one of the biggest expenses in, in trucking. Uh, excuse me. That and, and fuel in your own operator. So you want to have that experience, one or two years, so you can kind of minimize that insurance expense. But like I said, uh, get your experience with a, a mega carrier. Try a lease purchase program. You'll be making more money. You'll have more flexibility, and you'll be paying the owner the, the, uh, the equipment. Uh, once you own the equipment, you can take that equipment where you, where you choose. Uh, you can lease on uh, with another carrier, um, or you can apply for your own MC and DOT number. You'll be ready to go at that point, and, and then the sky's the limit. That is my opinion how you build a successful trucking career. I believe, you know, I know I stayed a company driver too long. I never took the opportunity of being a lease purchase owner operator. Um, I had young kids when I first started, so uh, it was sometimes it was kind of rough trying to, you know, wishing you could be there, not being there. Um, I had a marriage fail very tough on relationships um, um, it's just stuff that I, I wish I knew I had to learn from trial and error so you want to have a strong base support system you got to kind of this video is to kind of give you a um, heads up on some of the things that you can expect as far as adjusting to the lifestyle you want to have a uh, truck and GPS you want to have a refrigerator so you won't be spending so much money out here at these truck stops, $30, $40 a day trying to eat. Uh, you want to get you some fuel cards. You want to sign up for the Pilot Loves car so you can have, uh, so you can save some money on showers and things like that. You want to have a, a business plan whether you're going to be starting out with a, as a company driver or you know stuff starting out with a lease purchase owner operator because some some companies will let you start out at a, start out as a lease purchase owner operator right out with no experience just a fresh new cdl you want to have your business plan so you can kind of have a two three four five year goal that's something i wish i did i just jumped out there and you know i learned as i went you do those things, you take it very seriously knowing that each and every day is going to be a learning experience and each and every day you can lose everything out here. You know what I'm saying? Accidents happen, um, DOT inspections happen. It's very serious uh, out here driving trucks. Um, those are just some of my tips. Um, I'll probably continue this. Keep, keep um, an eye and a watch for that uh, Carriers vs. Brokers Part 3. Hopefully I have you some updates on how that last situation went. Uh, once again, I'd like to thank everybody for uh, watching. Can I please get that like? You can join the tribe and subscribe. And you can share if you really care. It's your boy Boss Rider checking in once again for Navigate Logistics. Peace.